everybody welcome back to my channel my channel is called ink stitch and my name is inga this is a channel all about cross stitch um, from hauls to actual whips um, and any other ideas um, if you like what you see uh, please press subscribe like button bell notification button and i will see you in my next video um, I know I had quite a few new subscribers, so thank you to those who are new. I really appreciate you and I hope you will find something interesting to watch while you stitch. So today's video will be a very short one. It really won't be long. Um, I just wanted to show you how I store my fabrics. Um, not that long ago, well, maybe long ago, I can't remember now. I've posted a photo on a couple of different Facebook groups and my Instagram of how I store my fabrics. And I got a lot of questions, so for I will show you what do I do storage wise. Um, and as I say, it won't be too long. I'll just show you what I do, what I use, how I fold, and that will be it. So let's get on. So first things first, um, I keep my fabrics in this sort of plastic box over here. Now, this box here is actually a box for CDs. Um, and I'll put the link down in my description bar if you want to purchase exact same boxes. I got them from Amazon um, and I'll post UK and US links. I keep them in this, in these boxes. I have two of these. This one's the only one that's full. The other one is sort of maybe three quarters full. Um, there is a little bit of a system in terms of colorway. Um, I try to kind of have like a little gradient going over here. Um, so yeah, I really like the box. Um, the main reasons why I bought this box um, in comparison to kind of any other storage is that I needed something secure. I have a kitten and I didn't want her to get into the fabric. So that's number one. Number two, I was moving homes. So I needed something that was easy to carry, easy to move. Um, something that, you know, when I take it out of the car, through the streets, into the block of flats, it won't get ruined. Um, and I think that's it. <clears throat> now, a couple of things before I open the box. With the fabrics, ideally, especially linen, would need some space to brief. So it's not ideal to keep it locked all the time with the lid. So what do I normally do is I, once it's on top of the shelf, I take the soft for a little bit and if it's on the if this is, I rotate them, so I'll stack them up and the top, the one that's at the top will have no lid just to give it a breather and then I'll rotate them. So then after a little while, I'll put the lid on this one, put it at the bottom and the next one goes up, take the lid off of that one, if that makes any sense. As I say, it's especially in it, linens need space to breathe. Oh, these colors look beautiful. They look stunning. Oh, I love them. Wow, okay. So this won't be a video of what's in my fabric stash. It will be a video of how I store it, how I fold it. Um, but if you're interested, if you want to see sort of like a fabric stash, maybe let me know in the description if you want to see that kind of video. <clears throat> so um, the box has two clips, so it's all secure. Now the actual measurements is sort of like a square-ish box, if that makes any sense. So folding the fabrics is a bit of an art, um, but I'll show you how I fold them. So every time I receive a fabric, I refold it and I'll try to maybe zoom you in if I can. Uh, let's see if I can zoom you in a little bit. Um, I try to refold them. Um, now I'll show you this one here, which is gorgeous is by Barbara Al Creations which is my favorite all-time favorite place to buy hand dyed fabrics so as you can see it's quite a narrow strip um is just the way it works the best for me for this box and I'll show you what I do so this one is um 27 inches by 19 inches or 70 centimeters by 50 centimeters so this is how i fold this type of fabric so i have it laid down in front of me the entire fabric 
Then I fold it in half lengthwise. So you have half of it lengthwise. Then I fold it again, like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Then what I do, I fold it, just overlap. And then the other one reaches the end. And this I find is the best way of actually doing it. And then fold it in half. And this makes it into a smaller square, which I prefer for this type of storage. So let's do a couple more in case you're interested. Now I don't put any cards inside. Um, a lot of people, I believe, put cards inside so that they stand. But I find that with these boxes, what they, once they're full, it stacks up nicely without the cards, even if they're not full. I have another box that's not full. Even then, it stacks up nicely without actually having a card. But the main idea is for it to stack is to, where you have the edges, for that to be facing down, and where you have the clean edge here, it goes like this. So let's do a couple more. I'll just put this one back in the box. Now this box is pretty full, um, ideally I wouldn't have that many, but somehow I just ended up with that many. Let's try, take this one, this is by Barbara L Creations again, it's called Water Glass. And this one's 19 by 13.5 inches. So again, each fabric is a little bit different, so no fabric will be the same. Um, Okie dokes, so this one I folded a little bit differently because it's smaller, so that one was the big piece. The smaller piece, what I do, instead of folding it in the middle, I fold it sort of like a fan, if you like. So, like this, in quarters, well, you know, is that quarters? Anyway, so just fold it like you would fold a fan. And then with this one, I again overlapped the middle a little bit. The next one overlap the middle. You will have a little bit over here and then fold it in half. And here you go. That's ready to go. Now, I think there were some questions before when I posted a photo of all of my fabrics and things. How do I keep them labelled? Now, most of the fabrics come with a label already, so I just keep them on. Um, and as I say, I don't really need a card. I don't store them based on their size. It's just all of them in the box, and then I'll go through the colours once I know what I want to stitch and see if that kind of matches with what I want to do. And then check if the count is kind of doable for me. Um, and each tag will have a count on it. Some fabrics don't have like a string attached or like anything attached to them. It's just a sticker. So I'll keep that sticker on or I'll pop it inside. Um, so I'll know it's, it's still got something. Um, let's try to fold one more big one. Um, let's have a look. Let's try... Mm -hmm. Let's try, is this a big one? No, that's not a big one. Let's see, what do I have? Um, let's try this one. This one's a big one. Again, so this is the same size, 70 by 50 centimeters. This is by Barbara Al Creations. It's called Golden Honey. Beautiful, beautiful color. Kidoke, so again, I'll unfold it so you could see what I'm working with. So again, it's a big piece. So I folded it in half, as you can see, fold it in half. Then fold that half in half. And then flip this end beyond, this is the middle point, beyond the middle point. Quite a bit beyond the middle point. The remaining piece and then fold them in half and here we go now eventually you will kind of know exactly which end how far to go beyond the middle point um 
so I just sort of that's the middle so it would have been middle like this so I'll just go a little bit over um, eventually you'll know and none of them are exactly the same I'll show you that um, none of them are exactly the same height which is absolutely fine they still fit in the box they look beautiful I can see all the colors all the shades all in one place they're all secured protected um, they're protected from any dust from everything basically so here's my box I'll just pop this inside now this box is as I mentioned is very full I need to empty it a little bit and put some of them in the other box here we go um, now I will show you so you could see as I mentioned none of them are the same height and it might be easier if I show you sideways here we go so as you can see, none of them are exactly the same height, but that really doesn't matter. The lid does go over it. It doesn't do anything to the fabric. It doesn't ruin them or anything along those lines. And they look beautiful. Um, so that's what I do. Now, in terms of how I organize them, as I mentioned, there's no system or order. Um, it's just kind of, I try to keep all darks and blues on one side, then greens sort of yellows and beiges and creams and then pinkish colors and then sort of magenta-ish colors um but that is all i wanted to show you today so if you like this video please press like subscribe and bell notification um if you've got any questions about this um obviously pop them in the description bar i'll put the box link down in the description bar as well and i will see you next time bye